Number 15. The Lothrop Twins. Two red-headed twins posted multiple online advertisements for prostitution in North Carolina in 2014. Caitlin and Sarah Lothrop said that they were, quote, two sexy young twins with excellent talent, and added, we have the perfect body with the softest skin. As if working as prostitutes out of a cheap hotel room wasn't bad enough, the twins weren't afraid of working together on the same client. We can make your dreams come true and then some, the online ads read. They were being pimped out by a 27-year-old man named Michael Lewis, who was providing the room and posting the ads. Evil twin Sarah seems particularly unstable. In addition to prostitution, she was charged with breaking and entering, assault, and using a communications device to make threats. Although more information on these crimes are not available, it seems as though she has no problem calling you to let you know she is about to break into your house and beat the fuck out of you. Number 14. The Trout Twins Two twins found themselves in the same prison at the same time for two completely different crimes. Lisa Rose Trout and Liza Rose Trout were both 29 years old in 2014, when they were both sent to the Lancaster County Prison in Pennsylvania. Lisa was pushing her two-year-old child in a stroller when she suddenly tipped the stroller on its side and walked away. While the child was left alone, wondering what was going on, its mother walked around picking objects off the ground that were there while talking to herself. Then, she went inside of a home and disappeared for a few minutes before coming back out. When officers arrived, they noticed Lisa had trouble pronouncing basic words and could barely stand up. At the same time, she kept making jerky movements that immediately let them know she was under the influence of something. According to her boyfriend, she often abuses her prescription pills. When Lisa arrived in prison, she was surprised to find her twin sister. Liza had been picked up on her third DUI charge and had already been in jail for months. It seems as if these two twins were destined for trouble. Number 13. The O-Twins on February 25, 2013, a group of masked men break into a luxury department store in Germany. They commit a quick smash and grab and manage to take more than 5 million euros worth of jewelry and watches from the cabinets and display cases. When police investigators find DNA on a glove that one of them left behind, they are shocked by the lab results. Apparently, the robber was one of two twins. The DNA evidence traced back to two possible suspects. The glove belonged to either 27-year-old Hassan O or his twin brother Abbas O. There's only one problem though. German criminal law is very strict and leaves nothing to chance. The police would have to prove beyond a doubt that it was one twin instead of the other. Although there is no doubt that at least one of them committed the crime on that day, if not both of them, Police still had to figure out exactly which one did it. And guess what? The O brothers are not talking. Therefore, neither of them can be officially charged. The twins say they are proud of the German constitution and thank it every day for allowing them to steal millions and get away with it. Number 12. The Hahn Twins Sonny and Gina Hahn seemed like two model citizens. In the 1990s, they had come all the way from South Korea to California with their mother, who was seeking to escape a bad marriage. They bounced around from Campo to Lakeside and eventually ended up staying in Irvine. The two seemed to be very happy living with their mother in America, and they got top grades. However, when they set out on their own in their early 20s, it became apparent that they were also living secret lives. Sonny was a thief who would steal credit cards and go on clothing shopping sprees. The evil twin had no problem stealing credit cards from her best friends, reasoning that they had rich families who wouldn't mind the financial loss. Gina was just as bad as her twin sister, if not worse. While Sonny had only stolen a little over $1,000 from her friends, Gina stole over $40,000 from friends and family alike in order to cover her astronomical gambling debts. 
When Sunny found out how much her sister had stolen, she pressed charges. Gina was charged with multiple felonies and was sentenced to prison. Sonny's prison sentence allowed her to leave the correctional facility during the daytime to work at a job. One day, Gina skipped out of her job and went to her sister's apartment with two male friends instead. I want this bitch dead, Gina had told them. She had the two friends pose as magazine salesmen to get her sister to open up the door. Instead, instead of Sonny, her roommate Helen Kim opened the door. Gina's friend flashed a gun and pushed his way in. She was tied up. Meanwhile, Sonny was in the next room. She called 911 moments before she, too, was grabbed and gagged. She was tied up and forced into the bathtub with Helen. The two feared for their lives. They had absolutely no idea what these people wanted from them, and Sonny would never have guessed that her evil twin was to blame. Police arrived shortly after and only managed to catch one person. Gina and her other friend had gotten away, but they were captured shortly after. At first, Sonny refused to talk to the press about her sister, but after a television series called Hard Copy offered her $10,000, Sonny suddenly had no problem telling them exactly how evil her twin had been. Proving Gina intended to kill her sister was easy. Aside from witnesses who heard Gina say she wanted to commit murder, she was also found to have recently bought trash bags, gardening gloves, and pine saw to cover up the scent. In 1998, she was sentenced to 26 years in prison. Number 11. The Cray Brothers Twin brothers Ronnie and Reggie grew up on the east end of London in the 1940s. Together, they would cut themselves a path of destruction that would eventually earn them the title as the most dangerous men in Britain. The twins were both obsessed by mafia movies from a young age, and they knew that living the mob life was their destiny. They started to dress and act the part, and they could definitely back it up too. Reggie in particular. He was an incredible boxer who could break your jaw in one shot. One of his favorite gangster moves was to offer you a cigarette and then punch your lights out. It worked every time. They started to call themselves The Firm and began recruiting other thugs into their mob gang. Then, they started taking over local businesses and started demanding a percentage of the profits in exchange for protection, which really meant that they would leave the owners alone. If the businesses didn't pay up though, then Ronnie and Reggie gave them double trouble. Sometimes the craze literally carved their reputation into other people. In 1954, the twins were hanging out in a pool hall that they had taken over, when a Maltese gang thought that they would make a power play and demand protection money from the firm. Ronnie went into a psychotic rage and slashed at the gangsters with a curved short sword until they all ran off, terrified. At another time, a famous jewel thief named Lenny Hamilton broke the nose of a firm member, so Ronnie took care of him personally. He had two firm members hold Lenny down as he took a red-hot poker and slowly tortured him with it. First, he burned all of Lenny's hair off of his head. Then, he jabbed the poker through his suit into Lenny's stomach. Lenny peed all over himself in fear as Ronnie stamped the poker onto both his eyebrows and then told him his eyes were going to be burned off next. And uh, he said, now I'm going to burn your fucking eyes out. That was his very words. And someone at the back shouted out, no, you're well, not there. Luckily for Hamilton, another member of the firm convinced Ronnie that it was too much and that Lenny had clearly already learned his lesson. Soon, the twins had established a full criminal empire. They were receiving thousands of pounds in kickbacks every month from a gambling club called Esmeralda's Barn. And they had their own nightclub called the Double R to hang out at and live the mob life. At this point, the two felt confident enough to reveal a huge secret to their community. Their homosexuality. This was a touchy subject that they feared would have hurt their image at first, so the two kept it secret. For a long time, they only had gay sex with each other because they felt there was no one else they could trust with their secret. When they came out of the closet, it bothered a lot of people. 
One gangster named George Cornell was overheard calling Ronnie a poof, which is a homosexual slur in Britain. Ronnie was suffering from schizophrenia at this point and really didn't care about getting caught. He shot George at the Blind Beggar pub in front of numerous witnesses. Around the same time, his brother Reggie stabbed a gangster named Jack the Hat McVitty for similar reasons. The cops started to put a lot of pressure on members of the firm, and they finally started squealing. The two were arrested in May of 1968, and their mafia lifestyle was over as quickly as one of Ronnie's legendary right hooks. Number 10. The Silent Twins June and Jennifer Gibbons were nicknamed the Silent Twins because neither of them could speak to anybody outside of their own family. They were born in Wales and moved around frequently. No matter where they went, they were considered outcasts by whatever new community they had joined. The few times they did try to speak, kids would make fun of a speech impediment they both had, as well as their darker skin color. This caused them to quickly hate everyone and go on a huge crime spree together. The twins soon developed their own language that let them plot crimes in the open without anyone knowing. They began to imitate each other's movements as if they were a single person. Therapists could not get them to stop doing this. When they were separated and sent to different schools, they simply stared blankly ahead and said nothing until they were reunited. They dropped out of school together at the age of 16 and locked themselves in a room. They started to drink, smoke marijuana, and only let over their two boyfriends for company. They also occasionally tried to kill each other. June tried to drown Jennifer in a river, and Jennifer tried to strangle June with a radio cord. It was an odd and evil relationship indeed. Their anger towards society soon caused them to become vandals and arsonists. They stole a lot of things and burned down buildings in their spare time. In the early 1980s, a fireman was injured when trying to put out a blaze at a tractor store which caused over $200,000 worth of damage. Then, a few weeks later, they were caught trying to burn down a community college. Instead of prison, a judge sentenced them to live in a mental institution called Broadmoor. At Broadmoor, the twins were given an IQ test and scored well above average, which made their complete lack of social skills even more bizarre to medical workers. They were put on high doses of medication and were kept separately. The few times they did see each other, they would attack each other on sight. Somehow, they eventually stopped fighting and came to the conclusion that if they ever wanted to be released, one of them had to die. Jennifer agreed to die if June agreed to start acting normal and try to interact in society like an ordinary person. This plan was the only way out in their eyes. They turned their behavior around and convinced the authorities to downgrade them to a less strict ward called Caswell in 1993. They had been in Broadmoor for 12 years by then. Almost immediately after arriving, Caswell's staff noticed that Jennifer was extremely sick. She died two hours later from a swollen heart, though an autopsy revealed no clues as to how this could have happened. To this day, absolutely no one knows how she died. Meanwhile, Jennifer has been released. Nowadays, the surviving evil twin keeps almost entirely to herself. Number 9. The Nameless Brothers In 2010, two South Yorkshire brothers, aged 11 and 12 respectively, brutally tortured two slightly younger kids without cause. The hour and a half attack was so brutal and sadistic that it earned them both five years behind bars. The two brothers took their young victims to a quiet spot and proceeded to think of new and creative ways to ruin them forever. These methods included hitting them with bricks, making them swallow pointy nettles, and making them molest each other while naked for their own enjoyment. As if that wasn't enough, they were also whipped with cable, cut with pieces of barbed wire, hit with rocks and branches, burned with melting plastic, 
jumped on, kicked, and they even had a lit cigarette shoved deep into an open wound. The cruel pair only stopped when one of the boys stopped moving and they thought he could be dead. They did not stop out of mercy, but rather because they could no longer get a reaction out of the exhausted and thoroughly tortured boy. As it turned out, he was minutes from dying by the time help arrived. The younger, nine-year-old victim managed to walk barefoot out of a muddy ditch and also managed to find help. His arm was severely wounded and he was barefoot. His face was covered in so much blood that the adult thought it had been painted on. When the brothers went to trial, the judge said that he was so disgusted that he refused to give any further information as to what they did, simply adding that the physical and emotional scars would be with their victims for a long time to come. The whole thing was captured on a cell phone camera. At court, the victim's furious mother shouted profanities at them and hoped someone would do the same thing to them one day. Only time will tell if her wish will come true or not. Number 8. Peter and Michael Verslaus Peter and Michael Verslaus are two twins who share everything together. In May of 2014, the twins hired a prostitute and took her to an abandoned house in Grand Rapids, Michigan. After they finished having their way with her, they told her how beautiful she was and refused to pay. Then, Michael held her down while Peter repeatedly beated her with a golf club. The twins were drunk and high on LSD as the beating went on and on. The 33-year-old victim begged for her life as the golf club came down on her repeatedly, smashing her face and body. She couldn't understand what was happening. This wasn't their first time together, and the twins had been respectful and kind to her before. By the time the brutal attack was over, she was nearly lifeless. There was enough blood to even scare the twins. They left her to die alone in the abandoned property. She left at 1am with only a blanket wrapped around her. Later, she was found by a random person who got her help. The victim had nine broken bones and a permanently smashed in nose, and she needed metal pins as well as 22 titanium screws. Wide gashes in her scalp needed eight staples to close. The attack left her with brain damage. I will be like this for the rest of my life, she told the court. I'm never going to be alright. Peter was given 14 to 24 years in prison for the beating. His brother Michael is a repeat offender and was given between 23 to 50 years. Number 7. The Whitehead Twins A pair of twins in Conyers, Georgia, murdered their own mother in 2010. Tesmaya and Jasmaya were only 16 years old when they got into an argument with their mother one school morning. Their mother accused them of smoking marijuana and messing around with boys. She hit Jasmaya upside the head with a pot, and then the situation turned deadly. Tesmaya grabbed the pot, so her mother grabbed a steak knife instead. They called each other names while they were in a standoff in the middle of their own home. Eventually, according to the twins, their mother calmed down and took a seat at the kitchen table. When she lunged for the knife again, the twins stabbed her. The knife severed their mother's spine, jugular, and deflated her lungs. The twin sisters dragged her into the bathtub to die, and then they went to school. When they came back home, they called the police and told them they had found their mother dead. Police found bites and scratch marks on both Tasmaya and Jasmaya, and knew that there had been a struggle. It took months to get a proper confession. Evil twin Tasmaya pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter, making a false report and possession of a knife, and her twin was convicted of similar charges. Both were sentenced to 30 years in prison, but it doesn't seem likely that they will stay there for long. They are both eligible to be let out early on parole as early as next year. Number 6. The Spahalski Twins Stefan and Robert Bruce Spahalski were two murderers who kept their dark secret hidden from the rest of their family and even from each other. Growing up, the two would often compete with each other to see who could commit the most crimes and steal the biggest items, but neither knew how far the other could 
and would go. One day, when he was only 16 years old, Stefan killed the owner of a store because, in his mind, he knew that the man, quote, deserved it. While this was going on, his brother Robert was smoking crack and becoming a serial killer himself. Stefan may have been the first to kill, but Robert killed much more often. At one point, he strangled a prostitute with an electrical cord, and he choked his girlfriend to death with his bare hands. He also beat the owner of a landscaping company to death with a hammer and kept his body in his basement. He was sentenced to 100 years, though an AIDS infection will probably cut this sentence short. I thought I was the only murderer in the family, Stefan said to a corrections officer after seeing his brother make the news. He just couldn't believe the odds. Number 5. The Carr Brothers In late 2000, Reginald and Jonathan Carr were in their early 20s when they invaded the home of three men with two female guests over. The Carrs forced them all to strip, made them perform sexual acts on each other, and then they beat the men and raped the two women eventually driving them to a soccer field and killing all five of them execution style with a bullet to the back of the head. It was one of the most horrible homicides in Kansas history. One of the victims was planning to become a priest and the other a nun. The Carr brothers were both sentenced to death. They are still on death row to this day. Number 4. The Shen Brothers in 2004, Chinese officials raided an apartment that was rented by two brothers by the first name of Shen. Inside, they found the cut-up corpse of a woman along with stolen bank cards, cash and expensive jewellery. It was the end of a long killing spree that had started way back in June of 2003. The evil brothers, aged 21 and 29, had travelled the country with a third female friend named Du Surong. Together, they brutally murdered and mutilated 11 Chinese women who worked as prostitutes at bathhouses and nightclubs. The insane brothers were not only murderers, but cannibals as well. They ate the kidney of one of their victims together on more than one occasion. They also stabbed to death an old business partner in his old home after plans for opening an auto shop had failed, but the rest were women, some as young as 16. The way they killed sex workers varied. Sometimes they would strangle them, sometimes they would stab them, sometimes they would burn them and sometimes they would dissolve them with acid and flush them down the toilet. In fact, that last method is exactly what police found them trying to do with the body during the raid that finally brought them both to justice. Number 3. The Cook Brothers Anthony and Nathaniel Cook used their jobs as truck drivers to travel the countryside on a Texas killing spree that lasted from 1980 to 1981. Together, they would rape and kill a hitchhiker by the name of Connie Sue Thompson, torture and kill a 12-year-old girl named Dawn Bax, and attack whoever else they could get their hands on. One day, the Cook brothers abducted a 24-year-old victim and his 18-year-old girlfriend and took them to a remote area. They shot the man in the stomach and stabbed his girlfriend while raping her. She survived. He did not. They tried to do the same thing to a second couple, but this time, the girl they kidnapped was able to phone her father. Her father arrived to help and was shot by Anthony as soon as he got there. Anthony was captured in 1981, but it took 17 years for police to catch Nathaniel using DNA evidence. In 1998, he was taken in by police, and the state of Texas could finally rest easy. Their confessions revealed that the man had separately killed people before, as far back as the early 1970s, though they did not decide to do it together until that fateful year in 1980. Number 2 the Briley Brothers In the late 1970s, two brothers went on a trail of terror that caused the city folk of Richmond, Virginia to stay inside out of fear for their lives. It all started when 16-year-old Linwood Earl Briley, the oldest of the two, sat in his bedroom and aimed a rifle at an elderly neighbor. He shot 57-year-old Orlean Christian, 
while she was hanging laundry in her backyard. Police thought it was a heart attack until somebody noticed a small, bloody hole in the back of her clothing at the funeral. Together, Linwood and his brother, Anthony Ray, joined up with a friend named Duncan Eric Meekins and started killing anyone they pleased. The murders were horrific and full of torture. They saw nothing wrong with burning people to death, crushing heads with cinder blocks, and even using scissors, knives, and even a fork to kill. One time, they even murdered a five-year-old boy in full view of his parents before shooting them. That's how heartless they were. Sometimes they committed rape as well. As brutal as their crimes were, they followed no patterns for police to form a common connection. The brothers were eventually found in Philadelphia after a 20-day killing spree, and they were executed by electric chair. Their friend Duncan was sentenced to life in prison for his role. Testifying against them is probably why federal prosecutors spared his life. Number 1. The Gonzalez Sisters in the 1950s and 60s, two Mexican sisters named Delfina and Maria Gonzalez managed to kill more than 90 victims while running a white slavery ring. They owned a small ranch in Mexico where the two would place help wanted ads in the local newspaper asking for maids. They asked for physically attractive women to respond only. When the respondents would arrive, the Gonzalez sisters would act like everything was normal at first. They would hire them on the spot and take them to a second house farther away. This house was actually a prostitution ring. Only when they got there would the victims learn of their true fate. If the girls did not want to work for them as prostitutes, they were brutally beaten and tortured until they did as they were told. To achieve this, they were made to hold heavy bricks for hours, clubbed mercilessly, or thrown into water that was freezing cold. They were also forced to ingest heroin and cocaine to make them addicted to drugs and less likely to leave. If the women started to become ugly from such a rough lifestyle, or if they became sick from their daily diet of tortilla bread and beans, they were beaten to death instantly. If they became pregnant, they were hung by their hands and beaten in the stomach until they gave a miscarriage. This operation was run in multiple houses, each with its own private cemetery. Worst of all, Mexican police and politicians largely knew about this deadly slavery ring, but they were all bribed so as to not do anything about it. It only ended in 1964, when three sex slaves escaped to the nearby town of Leon and told everything. When the police finally raided the houses, the Gonzalez twins had been alerted by corrupt officials and had already escaped. Inside, police found the dead bodies of 80 women, 11 men, and a lot of dead infants. Eventually, the Gonzalez sisters were found on the run and sentenced to 40 years each, which was the maximum sentence under Mexican law at the time. Thank you very much for watching this video, and if you're interested in more Twisted Top 15s, make sure to subscribe. Also, you can head over to my channel for other horror stories of the fictional kind, because sometimes real life just doesn't do the trick. You can find the link for that in the description. My name is Sir Aim, and I hope to see you all later.